Come on, let your amen be dominating. Pass me not, O Jen, to say, Savior, hear my heart who cry. Why on others thou art called Holy, O Savior Do not pass me by Tend to save your O Savior O Savior Father, this evening, this is our heart's cry. In this place, in your space, on your redemption city, and across the globe where people are watching and hearing, we ask, Almighty God, that you will not pass us by in Jesus' name. Wherever you find a believing amen, answer that person first in Jesus' name. Thank you for all you've done for us so far. Thank you for the many months before now. Thank you for the many months to come. Thank you because our status will change. We will become redeemers in charge in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, tonight, as you've used my brothers ahead of me, please use me also in Jesus' name. Thank you for our fathers that have gone ahead of us, our mothers that have showed us the way. Thank you for the privilege and showed us to stand on fed us to fly on we ask that none of us would miss your kingdom in jesus name thank you almighty father in jesus precious mighty name we have prayed come on let your amen have life inside of it amen i would like to celebrate and appreciate um, our father in the lord our mother in the lord the governing council, the leadership of this great mission, we do not take it for granted. If you're youth in the house, can we appreciate them? Our youth convention has been absolutely successful. Daddy, mommies, we are grateful. Thank you and thank you for this opportunity. To our intercontinental youth pastor, Pastor Belemina Ogbunge, we appreciate you. We celebrate you, the national youth pastor as well, and their wives. We say thank you and thank you to all the youth pastors everywhere across board we say god bless you in jesus name come on let your amen have that dominating shout all right uh you just sat down but very quickly according to ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 to 19 please jump up again very quickly we need to make some declarations we need to make some declarations um i will tell you why those declarations are powerful the last time i was on this same altar I was on one certain level but by the time i left this altar we were called to come and collect a letter and when the letter came it was a letter of promotion so your humble son brother cousin nephew is now a pastor in charge of province of youth province one to be precise you cannot come to this altar and your life will not be altered for greatness so grab your head and say my head Ah, uh, it is your own head, so please make it count. See my head? You will not lose your crown. No one will replace you. On your day of promotion, you will not be missing. Receive wisdom and knowledge. Touch your mouth. Say my mouth. My mouth. You will no longer gossip. You will no longer lie. Every prayer you pray every declaration you make will come to pass in the mighty name of jesus pull your hairs say my hairs 
my ears. You would only hear good news from now. You will hear clearly from God. You will hear the word for you in this program. Touch your eyes. See my eyes. You would only see good things. Uh, you would only see good things. You will see the projects that will be completed. You will see a good alert. You will see heaven. Touch your heart. Say my heart. You will no longer be broken. You will be restored. You will receive joy. And you will remain happy. And for some of us, say my stomach. You will no longer be hungry. You will be fed spiritually and physically. Touch your legs. Say my legs. You will carry me into my dominion. You will carry me into my husband's house. You will carry me into my promotion. You will carry me into heaven. Then make a feast and say, I receive strength. I receive power. I receive might over weaknesses. I receive grace to domain. I receive grace to dominate. And so shall it be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Celebrate Jesus. <laughs> My brothers ahead of me have done an amazing work. One came with a cane, one came with action, one came with fire. They were all just going and going. Please celebrate God and the graces that we've experienced here this evening. What is dominion? Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. I was not going to go anywhere else but that same place. And God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let him have dominion over everything. The version I'm picking because I'm on time. So if you're talking about dominion, we're talking about an area where someone has control, a sphere of their control. Like a king, it is a kingdom, a king's domain. For a president, it is a place where he presides over. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4 says, Where the word of the king is, there is power. So dominion for a king is his kingdom, a place where he has power and he has word over. Now, there is an item that separates the king from every other subject that he might have around him. In fact, in the king's domain, there will be persons that might be richer than him, that might be more educated than him, that might be more popular than him, but they do not have that exact same item. Therefore, if you are seeking dominion, or you are a king or intending king, there is one thing you should seek. That is the crown. That is the crown. And thanks to the drama department that did that wonderful drama ministration this evening, I borrowed their crown. That is the crown. Now, if you want a crown, then you must seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 to 33. I'm going back a bit because I know that they are, our fathers are behind and they are watching Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 to 33. It says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall I eat or what shall I drink? What school shall I go to? Or when will the admission come? When will my husband come? What clothes will I wear for my wedding day? How will I pay this rent? It says, All these things he knows that you are seeking. It says, For your heavenly Father knows that you are in need of these things. In verse, verse 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. I have a word for one of our brothers that was carrying the flag. The flag of that nation that you are carrying, you will soon enter there in Jesus' name. Uh, if you believe with him, the same would happen for you. If you would enter that place in Jesus' name. Jesus was teaching us how to pray, just as one of my brothers mentioned. He said in this manner, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. He says, in this same manner that we pray ye, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is all about his kingdom. Of course, they've shared many points. 
But if I'm taking the leaf out of our Father in the Lord in this house, there is no way I'm not going to tell you a story. But the story I'm about to tell you is this story, but I have modified it. I've upgraded it and I've changed the software a little bit. It said about a man that was running out of his days. I switched the man to becoming a king. And he had a son. And he called that son and mentioned to the son, he says, my time is almost out. I need you to look at my kingdom and look at everything that I have. All the estates, all the riches, all the farm, everything that is of benefit that I have been able to grow and groom. He says, then you are allowed to pick one item, one item. And then after that, I give every other thing to my faithful slave, my faithful servant that has been serving me all these years. The one that has kept custodian of all these things and ensure that they are profitable. Why you, my son, was just with me as being a son. The son was obviously baffled, so he went on a walk. And while he was doing this walk, he bumped into an old wise man. I pray that you would bump into somebody that would give you wisdom in Jesus' name. And then he greeted the man, and the man asked him, what is your problem? He laid down his issues, and the man told him, this is what to do. So when it was the D-Day, the son came before his father, the king. And the father said, what will you choose? It is time to pick one item. And the wisdom that was given was that he would pick the chief slave, the chief servant. And the son picked the chief servant and picked the chief slave. And because if you hone the servant or the slave, you hone everything that the slave or the servant hones. Absolutely fantastic. But then Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 17. What happened to the slave to be precise? The slave out of shock, out of shock, did not make any decisions. Out of shock, it did not, the slave did not have dominion over his emotions. So he accepted that faith he accepted that faith the bible makes it clear to us that the that wisdom would always rule over foolishness because if you need wisdom you can always ask god for wisdom he said the bible says it would not judge you it would give to you as willingly as you want when the turn of the slave came it was meant to ask speak to the king because the king will ask as well what do you want as being my chief servant even though you have everything here you can actually still pick the slave made an error, he didn't say anything. The servant made an error, he didn't say anything. But tonight, we are going to change that story. Because if the servant had that wisdom, if he connected with the wisdom, he would have picked the crown. Whoever has the crown rules the whole kingdom. The son only picked the slave and picked the servant. Now, this is what I come to present to you this evening. On the time that I have, I need you to jump up on your feet very quickly. I'm done. I need you to jump up on your feet very quickly. I'm going to ask you to speak to God, but while you are speaking, if you want riches, you will say, I want riches, but I would advise you to say, no, I don't want riches. If I ask you, do you want the estate? What would you say? Uh, come on, make that no clear, make that no clear. If I ask you, do you want the farms? What will you pick? What will you pick? Go ahead and speak to God Almighty with both hands up. And say, Father, I pick your crown. I pick your kingdom. I ask you to put your crown, your kingdom upon me. Because if I have your crown, if I have you crown my head, you would be able to crown all my efforts with success. You will be able to crown all my prayers with answers. You will be able to change my story. You will give me wisdom above all else. Because if I have your kingdom, if your kingdom is where I am surviving and living in, then I have dominion over everything else. If I have your kingdom, then I would not need to worry about all these things because you would automatically add them to me. Whatever else you have provided, this is this altar. And it's on this altar 
that I can alter whatever destiny is or whatever has been written about me. The last time someone came here, they were in one position. The next time they came, they were elevated. You have the opportunity to change everything. God has been trying to get your attention. You have access to the crown, but you are picking mundane things. You have access to the crown, but you are still playing with slaves. You have access to wisdom, but you are still behaving like you're foolish. Take dominion over your spirituality. Take dominion over your health. Take dominion over your finances. Take dominion over your emotions. Take dominion over everything around you so that you are operating completely on God's level. Completely on God's level. Do I see somebody praying? Do I see somebody praying? Do I see somebody praying? With your two hands, ask heaven, place that crown on my head. Place that crown on my head. Place that crown on my head. I do not pick anything else. I pick your kingdom. I do not pick anything else. The most important part of all of this, it is that crown. If I wear the crown here, I will be able to wear it in heaven. If I wear the crown here, I will be able to wear it anywhere. I want my spiritual crown. I want it to manifest as a physical crown. I want your crown in every area of my life. I want your crown so that I can live as you have ordained me to live. So that I can dominate as you have ordained me to dominate. I want your crown, Almighty Father. Give me your crown. Give me your crown. Give me your crown. And so shall it be in Jesus' precious mighty name we have prayed. My time is up. This crown I'm going to submit to our Father in the Lord. But I need you to find somebody that you would agree with. Just one person. Look at somebody that looks like their prayer is going to be answered. Look at somebody that doesn't look like a prayer point that looks like a prayer answer. And then agree with that same person. The next time I see you on this ground, we will be dominating. 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 I don't know what you need to dominate over, but we will be dominating. Our own testimonies will be so big that nobody will be able to deny it because the results will be there. And so shall it be. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying.